is the Will Clayton Church of Christ in Humble, Texas. This is May the 12th, 2021. This is our midweek Bible study, and it is entitled, What is the Spiritual Damage of Drugs and Alcohol Abuse? What is the Spiritual Damage of Drug and Alcohol Abuse? Abuse. Now we're going to start with the text in Proverbs 23, do some expository work, and then we'll go into some other uh, areas of uh, the Bible. But people take drugs and alcohol lightly. Uh, it is a very dangerous thing. It can cause permanent damage while you need other medicines for the rest of your life. And so therefore, you don't want to get yourself involved with cases like that. Now, one of the things that uh, we have to recognize in our heart and uh, be aware of is that God has always known the drug scene and where it exists. The witches, they had very special drug and hallucinatives they put together. Uh, that's where you see uh, our word in the New Testament, Galatians 5 and 20, for which is the word uh, pharmakia. Uh, uh, some may pronounce it that way in Greek. They may pronounce it another way, but nevertheless, uh, it deals with uh, word pharmacy for us, a variant at least of pharmacy. And therefore, the witch is attributed to the word. Why? Because she and he, the other males, they made potions. And uh, through those potions, they are able to cause hallucinations, but not that they are not real, uh, because they are allowed to connect to the other side of life uh, in the demon world. And they also can bring up dead humans that you know. Uh, and so the idea is that uh, we know they are part of these hallucinatives that they distribute out. So this would be your crack, your crack cocaine, your uppers, your downers, not administered by uh, the physicians who've been trained. Uh, your different variants of weed. And we're not talking about the CBDR that does not have uh, the thing that gets you high. We're talking about the one that does have the oil itself that has the potency. It is nothing but a drug. And these things are very good for extreme severe cases of head trauma and many other uh, diseases. They found out, talk about the one that has the power to get you high. And uh, it's been a blessing to many uh, ex-football players, boxers, people who've had head trauma. It's been a great blessing. And, uh, but it is a medicine, and it is a hashish, uh, those types of, of things, heroin, uh, uh, crystal meth, you know, things like that. Those things in proper use will have an array of healing power, but they are not for you to dabble in uh, to get high. Uh, some things have a greater potency than others. Alcohol is enough to make you act a fool and kill yourself. But these things, these drugs, have a greater depth of potency to where they are in smaller amounts and they are more powerful and they act quicker. They'll get you high quicker than a couple of shots of liquor. And so I know a gentleman that licked an acid tablet. He was a member of the church. He shared it with me one late night we were talking and he told me he took two licks of the acid tablet and he said the walls began to open their mouth and speak to him. So that's the hallucinative, you know. And so they, he said they found me a couple of days later at some park just sitting at the base of a tree looking. And he said, I asked the Lord to forgive me. He said, I would never do it again. He said, I've never touched that item again. And so we have to understand these things uh, sometimes were created for evil purposes. And they, thought they would later find out they have good purposes. Sometimes they were created for good purposes and then turned into evil. So, but they, we're going to show you that the Lord is afraid for your life to dabble in either the alcohol or the drug scene because he knows what it can do to you. Uh, it doesn't matter the potency of alcohol in this aspect because you can reduce the amount you drink. So you say, well, you know, uh, this little light table wine. Table wine will make you act like a fool if you drink too much. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're saying the potency of how much of it is very potent, you would take a little. That's why people drink shots out of a shot glass. They don't drink it out of a 
gobbler. You know, because you may you fall out and might die, you know, to so take a shot, they'll drink it down with business. I say, oh, Zan, what, I, I know a lot of things, but the idea, I'm not dealing with it, but I can't be ignorant to the fact of things. And I remember my wife brought a lot of tremendous information to this congregation years ago when we first started on drugs and alcohol, different things, abuse, different types of drugs. Brother Mitch Gibson gave a lesson from a policeman's standpoint as well as a Christian. Uh, we had those particular uh, classes before, and we'll have them again uh, as the law will allow us to. People are a little bit afraid to gather. You can hardly get people to come to church now. You know, so we try and take it one step at a time. We can get them into the church house to worship. We can go into the other areas that we normally uh, deal with each year. So we see uh, Proverbs 23 in verse 39. Let's look at God's perspective. God says something here uh, that will help uh, you and I uh, to be able uh, to get ourselves uh, in line with what he would have us do. I said 20, 39, forgive me, I mean 29, 29, Proverbs 23, 29. Uh, it says, who hath woe? Who hath so? So woe, you know, trouble, problem. See, one thing person don't understand, liquor brings you trouble. It causes you, as Brother Frias teaches us a lot, it interferes with your transmitters in your mind. So there's a physical impairment that immediately hits. Stumblings, uh, slurred speech, slurred, uh, blurred vision, uh, making you think something's closer and it's far, something's farther and it's closer. That's why I, when you see people drunk at the time I work uh, coming in late at night, uh, in the middle of the night, you see a lot of people driving slow. Sometimes it flashes. They're telling you, watch out for me because I'm drunk. And they all but giving a signal. Police pull them over all the time. They see them walking, putting their hand on their nose. It's basically over for them, you know. But the idea is that because uh, they're doing so slow, they figure, I just go slow. I won't hit nothing. But they don't, they still can't judge. They end up hitting something anyway, you know, because it's just the way it is. So I said, well, don't drink more than you can handle. Well, you don't know that when you're feeling good. See, once you start feeling good, one more not going to hurt, you know. So, you know, be responsible. It's hard to do any of that unless you are in a room where people are going to make sure you don't get out and hurt yourself. That's about the only way. But that's only the motor skills. But what we're going to deal with tonight leads motor skills and goes to the inward man. Mm -hmm. See, because you're, just because you can't see and your vision is blurred don't mean you should go to bed with the wrong woman. Y'all follow me? <laughs> see, as I see, you can't be, you didn't go blind and deaf. You know, so, yeah, it makes you blur, but you still have a comprehension. I've, I've known people that were extremely drunk and could not drive. I had to take them home. Extremely drunk. And they would tell me they put the wrong address in the phone, man. So I'm like, man, what is telling me? And then we go there, and he laughed. Hey, see, I tell you, you got to go the other way. I said, thank you. But he too drunk to drive because he said some things to me that were, you know, <laughs> somewhat racially motivated, but, you know, so I knew I said, well, he's probably a nice guy. Normally, you know, he wouldn't say that, you know, and then he bought me some food, you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just telling you what's happening. So, see, he's got ins and outs of coherency, ins and outs of coherency, but he knew that that phone address was wrong. So, see, you can't drink and then go, you know what I mean? I was drunk. I didn't know who I was sleeping with. Well, that means you were that ignorant, and then you're like lot. You got so drunk you could not tell your daughter, this is what I'm telling you, it's more than your eyeballs. It is your spirit that's no longer so. Because mm -hmm. you, you can't just leave it at physical. No, 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 no. Uh, because Lot didn't kill his daughters. He didn't go, you are monsters and beat them to death. How come he didn't think they were monsters? You follow me? He didn't think they were dogs. Get away from me, you beast. He didn't kick them. He knew they were women. But he didn't know they were his daughters. He didn't go blind. He knew they were women. He didn't know it was a dude. He didn't have sex with a man. Now let me show something with you. That's why we're going to study tonight. It causes, after it damages the physical, it's able to now reach the spiritual. See, so what Brother Free is telling you, the normal decisions you would make are impaired. So now you're not staying sober mentally. So he gets past wall number one, the mind, the vision. And then he goes into area number two, the inner man. And that's when he begins now to do some adjustments to the inner man. That's when you allow not to sleep with your daughters because you're so drunk. You do know it's a woman. 
So let me tell you something. I want to make sure we get this done. A man knocked out drunk and not have sex. I'll say that twice. A man knocked out drunk and cannot have sex. Now, y'all listen to me now. I'm a man. And if you know physics and physical, drunk men that's laid out and sleep snoring, they're not going to be able to have sex. Okay? So, these girls have their father performing a lot because he's impaired physically, but they've that sin has reached Lot's soul. And now his soul is making a poor decision. His soul is like, I just need a woman. I don't care who the woman is. You follow me? So, now we got that particular thought down, Pat. Now, let's look at this next one. Okay, Proverbs 23 and verse 29. He says, Whoever woe, so drinking brings woe and trouble to the spirit. So Lot wakes up and Lot has woe. I've slept with my daughter. They got to break it down to him then. The two grandbabies are my babies. So now somebody would say, can a grandpa be a daddy too? In the case of Lot, yes. So he is not only their granddad, he is their actual daddy. Isn't that sorrowful and sad? So I say, well, how can you say that? Because that's his daughters. Those are not, and they're not from the same woman's womb. Lot didn't come from his wife. He didn't come from his wife. They came from Lot's wife. So Lot has sex with his daughter. Why? Because Satan, or the demon that's tormenting him, has reached his inner man. His inner man now does not care who he touches. You can't say, you know, he, you know, he, does, he doesn't ask questions, but he sure knows it's women. He knows it's a woman. I bet you couldn't have brought a dude in there on Lot. So you got to understand what's going on. He didn't, like I said, he didn't think it was a bear. He didn't think it was a bear. So, I understand. See, the next round the devil gets, after he gets the motor skills down, after he gets your comprehension down, good decision-making process, he goes for the soul. Because that's the actual target. To get you to hit a child while drunk, that's woe. That brings you woe. To get your daughters impregnated, that's a spiritual damage. Beyond just an accident I wouldn't have committed. Now I'm going into immorality. So now the drinking alters the moral judgments. The moral judgments. That's where we go from. Now had a lot been homosexually driven. But been fighting it. He may have stepped with a dude. See but it's pretty apparent as drunk as he is. He is in homosexual mode. But remember he comes from a homosexual oriented group of heavy influence. And he doesn't go to seek a man. He doesn't put him away. I want a man. He doesn't push his dog away like that. So see, that's what, so this is what you understand. Things that you may normally would never do. I don't care how drunk somebody gets you. you you're not going to do it. Things that you may be susceptible to do. Get you a little drunk. And you'll fall into it possibly. See, it's, each individual is different. That's what you got to understand. So anytime you have a comment or question. Saints, you know, it's a Bible study. So you know. Uh, please feel free. We're going to talk about it some more too. And so Proverbs 23, 29 says, who had sorrow? See, he's got sorrow. You know. He said, man, you drove your truck into Mr. Johnson's cow. You killed this cow, man. He got sorrow now. Who had contentious, argumentative, you know. Uh, I remember one night, myself and a supervisor, another co-worker with a company, we had went out to eat company uh, gathering. He would take us out to eat different supervisors. And so he was our supervisor. And so he was too inebriated to drive. So he told him to park his car and the other guy was going to drive him home. So he was extremely dramatic. But he was a guy, and he was a member of the church too. He was a guy who uh, would be dramatic, but you could see him suppress it. But when he was full that night, he was coherent. He never called me the other guy's name. He was very coherent. But he began to say things. That's what Brother Fritz was telling us about. Your transmission is not that. So you began to say things that you would normally fight. No, that's still the super. I was going to fight. I was like, hey, man, cool down, man. I put him aside. I said, man, no, man, no, man. He's always doing 
me out there. See, I'm like, oh, man. And I'm talking, saying, man, I'm fine, man. Please. And he said, I know. He's drunk too much. I said, yeah, I'm fine. But see, and that's why I don't drink. So I'm just being Richie Ryan now. Because I don't, I don't like apologizing for food. Because I don't know who's going to accept it. So I don't want to say nothing or do nothing stupid. So I don't touch the stuff. You know, I have in the past before I came to Christmas, but I don't touch it. So he had contention. He was contention. And I was looking at him like, what are you arguing about? Then he got mad at me for making this spectacle. I said, I didn't make it to hurt you, man. I said, you know, I just, you, you're a great guy. I'm just punk because we got a big inspection. And I mean, you're trying it. I was, <laughs> finally calmed down, got him in the car, and they got him on because he definitely couldn't drive. But the supervisor actually, you know, gets him on. I mean, the same guy he's contending with. So he says, who had babbling? Babbling. Sometimes people babbling. You don't know, uh, uh, you know, like Brother Fritz and I were talking the other day. They'll have a, I've seen people having a full conversation with themselves downtown. And you have to watch them because they will, I'm telling you, be careful when you drive downtown. You, they will step off the curb, especially if you drive at the midnight, off the curb and right into your car. Right into your car. As if there's no car now. And they'll stand right in the middle of the street and have a full conversation with themselves. And they just start saying, no, you. And they don't like the other person, no, you. And that just, it's horrible. It could be alcohol. It could be drugs. We don't know. I mean, I'm, I don't know if many of you have seen this. Who had wounds without cause? What happened? He hits his knee, walking by the coffee table he's never hit before when sober. He went to, man, who somebody kick? Somebody hit me in money. Nobody hit him. Who had redness of eyes. See, there we go. Redness of eye. See, now the Lord, tell you, the Lord knows I made you. And I know y'all have seen him like this. And I want to tell you why their eyes get red. He starts to talking about it. They that tarry long at the wine. So see, see, this isn't like Timothy. Drink no longer water, but take a little wine for your stomach's sake. Paul said, little wine. And they say, don't drink water, drink wine only, Timothy. Drink, drink. When you eat, Drink wine when you drink wine. No, he didn't tell him that. A little wine for your stomach's sake. He says, and they that go to see mixed wine. You got to understand. See, you know, the, the sadness about modernization is we begin to think that we're better than other people because we made something they didn't make. I'm telling y'all now, when you deal with science, and many of y'all are more educated than I can ever dream about. I've seen a few documentaries about artifacts they found. That is a geometry uh book written by the Greeks before geometry was known to any man. It's dated so far back. The artifact, and one guy, he was really hustling to find it. Man, he looked all over old bookstores. He knew it had somehow gotten sold by some old guy. But anyway, they found it. They, they questioned me. He said, what if that information that was recorded in that book from the stones and the old writings had been found? And in fact, he said, it would have turned everything upside down. He said, because man would have had that knowledge passed on to the next generation, but he wasn't ready for for certain generation. Now you know why the law don't let it find it. It ain't fine. But it's found later because the law let you know, yeah, I, I got to watch y'all. Y'all hurt yourself. But he wanted to let us know they were smarter than you all because that's centuries before you all figured out this way of mathematics. So now you can look at the pyramid and say, okay, yeah, if stuff makes sense. Now it makes sense. So if the Greeks had it, then what would the Egyptians have? See, this is what's wrong when people die. Let me tell you how easy it is to forget, brethren. There's a whole generation of Egyptians that came up that had forgotten who Joseph was. They were still getting a fifth of everything anybody made in money given to Pharaoh. But he didn't know how he was getting that fifth. Because Joseph had died, his children had died. So that means the Egyptians that were Joseph age died. And the Egyptians that children died. So you start quit talking about it. It just becomes a part of this. You got things right here in this city of Omni that you, you don't know why I got there. And some people may not even know. Man, we had some order. You know, the old courthouse burnt down in 1895. <laughs> Say, what if it was established then? So it's gone. That record's gone. It's gone. Brother Fritz. Man, great teaching, bro. Thank you, my brother. Man, uh, yeah, concerning uh, Joseph, they have forgotten. You mm -hmm. know? 
and just just like your life, you know, when it comes to the things that happen on this earth, you know, will be forgotten. The Amen. next generation, they're gonna, they're gonna have their own life, their own problems, business, have to take care of families, and so it's just a vapor. So you can't let things like drugs, alcohol, drunkenness uh, cause you to stray away from the path or to or to perish spiritually, because it can't happen. A lot of people are dying thousands a year or drunk driving or you know things like that, you know, and then time passes and. Then those are, souls are forgotten. Amen. You don't, and so James 1, 12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. For when he is uh, tried, he shall receive the crown of life, Amen. which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted he any man. Amen. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. And enticed, says, then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin when it is finished, it says it brings forth death. So that's the process. It, that's how it creeps in into your conscience, you know. Um, when it comes to, as a co-worker of mine, he was reported he, uh, uh, he got with his boss, and there was like a party, and he ended up drinking to the point where he tried to communicate with his boss's girlfriend at the party. Oh my goodness! And uh, mm. then he got into a fight with with the gentleman, mm. or tried to. And then another gentleman put his hands around his throat and put him against the wall. Mm. And so he forgot the whole thing that everything that happened that night. He didn't even remember the altercation or anything. But the idea is that, as you were mentioning, it blocks your neurotransmitters mm -hmm. to communicate. It doesn't mm -hmm. let it record mm -hmm. you know it doesn't record it because there's a blockage there mm -hmm. that the alcohol does and uh sad part is when uh there's a blockage and then people die mm -hmm. during that blockage then they just wake up in hell mm -hmm. uh, they wake up they if they die they just wake up in hell and mm -hmm. and then what what are you going to say then mm -hmm. you know when Amen. you're there i mean you know, can, you can't rewind time. You can't take things back. That's right. After it happens, it's it's over. And so, uh, this this world uh, and this uh, the mindset of this the, 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 some of the the youth or uh, the older is is to uh, be drunken or mm -hmm. to be high. And so, because the temptation comes where the majority is persuading. Uh, the others to do it and then they give in mm -hmm. and then the, some of the saints if they don't watch it they look at their life and they want to sometimes be a part of the majority mm -hmm. and then they yield to that temptation because they don't want to feel left out mm -hmm. they don't want to feel um like they're unpopular mm -hmm. or they are not loved mm -hmm. you know because a lot of people they want to be loved but at the same time if you choose to be loved you got to be careful which choice you're loved in, mm -hmm. whether it be, okay, sports, you know, people can love you if you do sports or your knowledge, you have knowledge, skills and mechanics. Or, But when it comes to uh, you recognizing mm -hmm. they don't like me because mm -hmm. I don't do this sin with them. Mm -hmm. So in order for them to like me, I have to do this sin with them. Mm -hmm. So now I can be accepted by them mm -hmm. and now I can have fun and have peace. And so that's the deception. That's what James is talking about. That's Amen. how yeah, temptation creeps in mm -hmm. and it takes over. Then it becomes a new you, as we mentioned on Sunday. You are now a new person. Mm -hmm. You know, and many saints who have left the church uh, of Christ, they didn't desire that character anymore of Christ. They desired to be someone else because mm -hmm. Christ has rules. That's right. And over time, you get tested. Okay, do you like my rules or do you hate my rules? Mm -hmm. And then that... It shows that, okay, because you st desire to step away from the church, now it shows that you hate God's rules. That's right. And so there's only a matter of time where God no longer owes you any more breaths Amen. or any more heartbeats. And mm -hmm. he's the one that chooses that. We don't choose that. Mm -hmm. It's it's up to him. So it's needful to take heed because uh, his mercy runs out. Amen. God bless you, Brother Chris. Thank you so much, my brother and everybody else. That's wonderful, wonderful teaching that and i hope we understand because remember 
we kind of threw out Lot in the beginning. Uh, Lot, normal, the see your brain is so connected to your spirit. If, like Brother Fritz, I mean, I, I know y'all heard him teach many times. If, if you send a message to a computer and it doesn't get it because it's blocked, it never, it never gets the message. You're gonna say, "Man, I sent you, a, I sent you a message. I didn't get your email. Something happened." I said, "Man, you got the one for you. Yeah, but I didn't get that one. The transmission, something happened. So I can't move on what you wanted. Well, that, that, that's 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 what he taught us. You can't move on it. So now, instead of, oh, I better wake up. I forgot. This is the boss's girlfriend. Although she's coming back at me, it's not gonna work because this is his woman." Well, I'm not, I'm not down with that, you know. That that's blocked. All I see woman, I'm gonna talk to. Her. I don't care who she came with. See that lot, two girls, I'm down, you know. It, it, I'm gonna be man, she's your daughters. No, but remember, remember, lot is damaged goods. See now, this is one thing I want to talk about. See, because Satan's reaching for that soul. Lot's damaged goods. He took those same two daughters. And was going to let them become whatever those men wanted to do with them. Now remember, he's damaged goods. The damage and vexation daily has caused him being sober physically to lose his sobriety spiritually. So he becomes uneven in judgment. These are holy men. And I'd rather give my daughters, although they're holy to this point in virginity. To a bunch of vile men that have threatened to rape me if I don't turn them in over. And do worse, they said. No time. My girl's over. The angels don't even discuss that. Just grabbing by, start yanking me in. What's well, a signal? You don't know what you're doing, man. Mm -hmm. Blind them, get them away. They can't even find the door. And they was at the door, so blind they can't find the door. So, what happens? Now when Lot gets drunk, you think it's real hard now? To go on and sleep with the girl. I mean, you're fixing to give them to another man. See, this is the thing you have to understand, brother, is that we have a battle. Now, see, those angels corrected him on that. And we're not going to beat him up about it. He's still called a righteous man. Stupid decision in the heat of battle. Brother Fred just talked about that. So a young person or a person of age, my friends, not as me as I am, you like a lot. Heat of battle. Get her two girls. Heat of battle. Give me a shot at it. Let me lick that tablet, you know. Let me snort that. Just a little bit. I don't want to take a little off. Just a little bit. It don't take but a little bit. We already talked about the drug is more potent than alcohol in its quickness to cause damage. It's a, it's a different type. Now, you have some medicines that don't fight blood pressure real good. And you got some medicine that will have you you're so weak you can't get up because it's not your blood pressure too low. It's just a potency thing. It doesn't make it any more dangerous because in the wrong, a right amount given, it's okay. Let me tell you, cut the pill in half. But you drinking and chug a lug and you're not measuring nothing, man. No lines on the glass. The person serving you drunk. So you have no hope of getting out of it. So you have strong drink, which is the heavy liquor, and wine. But wine is a marker. It still, it still gets you. You know how wine mocks you? Pretty color, sweet taste. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. I remember days have passed before I became a Christian. My brother was a bartender, so me and my cousin, we went to this little small place that was by a hotel, a popular place, and we were drinking. And the drink he made was as fruity as you could have. <laughs> I said, I bring me another man. He said, all right, man, all right. I said, be careful with this now. And man, when I got that second one, it was on a tall glass. When I stood up, the floor was like a ship moving. And he's like, man, you're going to be all right. Man, you just wait. Let me drive you home. I said, no, nah, man, I got a cousin. We're going to be all right. And man, when I was driving home, we were going around this curve. That curve seemed like it took forever to go around. And man, I was like, my goodness. It was sweet, though, like a, like a juice. But it had something in it greater than juice. You know, and so we have to understand that's why it's a mock wine or fool. You sweet, you sitting there, you ate steak. Well, that steak was good. Give me a couple more shrimp. Give me another glass. Top it off, all right? Top it off. See, so you get up, and before you know it, somebody says something, man, you know, you didn't have enough. Don't tell me what to do. See, now nah, there's another reaction because it's mocking you now. It got you. It opened up the door just wide enough for the devil. 
All the demons come on in. Hey, we ain't going to be long. Hey, how y'all doing? Wait, as I come into the room, wait. Before you know it, he installed something. He took something from you. Resistance. Proper speech. Forgiveness. Or not getting angry when you should. You know, sometimes you can drink. you just too passive. Do you hear the ear when you call mama? Well, you know, man, this is family. What, mama? You, you wouldn't have done that. That's what I was saying. So it's a marker. Don't let it fool you. That's why sometimes saints are fools. It's just table wine. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> you get deceived by some table wine. And you'll be apologizing. I've sinned. I want y'all to pray for me because that table wine will get you. Don't fool yourself. The other just hits you quicker. So he says, they tear along at the wine and they seek mixed drinks. So you got mixed drinks. Mixed drink, mix up. You got to watch when you're mixing stuff. See, when you start mixing stuff, you're getting different potencies, different medicinal properties that go and affect different areas. Maybe the motor skill is knocked off a little quicker. Vision is still good, but the motor skill is knocked off quicker. You know, so you have to understand that. We got to watch it. Uh, look not thou upon the wine when it's red. That's red. One of the things that blew Israel's mind when they were taken captives into one nation, that there were pictures of the, 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 the previous rulers, and it was painted in red. And the Bible says they were in awe as they saw the picture so big. Look at that. That red. God, man, red has always been a brilliant color. Red car, red car, sell quick. Red car, bet. Red, they made a song, Little Red Carvin. He said, Red, but we thought red just get you. He said, Don't look at it, it's red. It's red now. Watch it. He says, Don't look at it. This is what the Lord is telling you. See, now the law will let you drink. You better believe Jesus turned that into wine. And he said, Go take it to the gun, let him drink. He didn't say, Now y'all get stinky drunk. He didn't say nothing <laughs> stupid like that. <laughs> he just said, Y'all need some of that. I ain't tell y'all. I ain't tell you, thou must drink. He said, go let him taste it. He wants to see, you know, he wants to know. I'll turn to the better batch. By this time, y'all had a jump. It's the better batch. And so he says, uh, when he give it this color in the cup, see, it's designed that way. Like I tell you, you go to the grocery store, man, those things are orange and yellow. All pretty because sometimes they put the little baby umbrella in it man that baby umbrella have you losing your mind that drink with that little umbrella don't fool yourself plus that's a ladies drink but then you get you about three of them here you better not try to drive get you about three of them ladies drink you won't be able to drive home when it moves itself all right see he's just stirring around but when he's not he's he trying to say it's gonna move see he's telling you it's moving now he's saying look at the color it's gonna move right it's, it's fixing to handle you it's gonna handle you at the last, it bite it like a serpent. See, so it moves itself right. You drinking it down, man. You feeling good. You know, give me another one of that. You know, I remember you used to have an old joke. A guy said, man, he was on a bar. You know, just show you how it messed with your mind. The world knows about it. He said, it was an ugly woman over there. She was so ugly. My goodness. He said, but after about two drinks, she, was, she didn't look that ugly. He said, well, they had about four drinks. He said, oh, girl, look pretty nice. You know, see, see, see. <laughs> It's over with now. See, the, the brother Fritz, he's a gentleman. Normally, that's what she didn't look good to him. Now, you know, I'm full, you know. So you have to be careful. So he says here, and I'm not telling you how to drink. I'm telling you, if you want to with the Lord, I'm saying with the Lord, don't fool with it. Now, you do what you want. He didn't say I'm going to put you in hell for fooling with it, but he did say when you get drunk and you're not sober, I'm holding your charge on you for everything you do. Believe that. You're going to get, no matter what the police catch you, the Lord going to catch you. Mm -hmm. He said, it'll bite you like a snake and sting like an adder, poisonous snake. See, so he says it'll bite you. So, see, once again, remember the physical stuff. The, the senses, Brother Free, is talking about, they're not connected. Snake bite. You see, they big, big old hole in my hand. But it stings like an adder. There's a poison that goes in the body, mm -hmm. there's a poison that goes in the soul. Remember when Job was praying for his children? He, he brought a sacrifice. He said, maybe they cursed the Lord in their heart. Now, these were good kids. But you get full, you know, somebody get talking about, you know, I use some modern terms, Bitcoin, you know, and, uh, you know, some gold, you might have, some stock, you know, 401k to get the, say, yeah, man, they, they ripped us off. I'm like, yeah, what I'm talking about, man. And he's supposed to be a Christian. That's why I say, man, you know, Christian, man, I say, you know, there's a lot to be said about the Lord himself. Or, you know, oh, oh, you messed yourself up. So John said, look, man, you know, they're successful. 
Let me go and pray just in case. They say, they say, well, what will that do? How will the Lord help? Well, he'll hear Joel's prayer and maybe buy them. Time to see, saints, we can buy each other time. God bless you, Kevin. We can buy each other time. We, we can't get a sin removed if it's a sin of the debt. If it's not a sin of the debt, the Lord will hear us. But we can buy some time. We can buy some time. But now, when time's up, it's up. How do we know? Am I making this up? No, Moses bought Israel time. And he got him in the wilderness. Got him in the wilderness. Joshua and Caleb didn't have nothing to do with that foolishness. See, when you hear the Israel did, but not everybody. Then you had kids. They weren't doing anything crazy. Running around, you know, maybe they made them stay in their room. But the people and Aaron went bananas, you know. Now, how is Aaron the priest and Joshua can't even be in the priesthood? But he and Caleb don't do that because each person's different. And they're young guys. Just because you're young doesn't mean that you got to be crazy. Mm -hmm. That's why it's crazy for saints to start pulling out the age card. Mm -hmm. That doesn't look, if Aaron pulled out the age card, it would be a mockery. Because it's two young guys, they didn't even get involved with it. So, we understand that uh, he says, uh, that I shall behold strange women. See, there it is. Mm -hmm. Now you know how it got not. See? The women now don't look like my daughter, but it's still women. Don't look at my daughter me no more. You know, already kind of shaky anyway. I don't ask no question. I don't ask, well, y'all, you know, you know, I ask, now who are you ladies? Nothing. Just here come a lady, you know, and lot just loses it, you know. And so uh, he said, that heart shall utter perverse things, fraud, fraudulent things. What if your wife catch it? Girl, I'm not married. No rings on these fingers. He didn't take the rings off and left them in the car. See, he lying. Perverse things, you know, perverse things. When he get home, it's not like you've been with a woman. I haven't been with no woman. You, you call Billy right now. Me and Billy, his car broke down, and Billy already know whatever she called, lie for you because you lie for him. Perverse things. See, that's how it is. But God going to take it in the judgment. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lied down in the midst of the sea. Who goes to bed? Peter couldn't even walk on the water consistently without losing it and starting to sink. Who's going to lay down in the water? Or is he that lies upon the top of a mast? Y'all know I always have to remind us to make sure we got, that's the, that's the thing that holds us, the mast. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't sleep on the top of that thing? Mm -hmm. That's the, the thing not wide enough. He says here, the statement comes now. Thou hast stricken me, shalt thou say. Nobody hit him. He hit his head. He fell out and hit his head. Sometimes, you know, you get home and everything okay. Sometimes I drop people off. I used to work in certain areas. I don't go to them more because it's too much of this. You have to walk them to the door. You have to walk them to the door, man. They will fall. You know, if they hit the head, you got to stay and out of ambulance come. Mm. Oh, man, your whole night. You don't make no more money. You know, so I mean, my goodness, he walking to the door and getting the door. When he get in the door, he might hit his head on the coffee table, fall flat, boom. He wake up, man, you know what's the man? You know, maybe the driver beat me. I don't about to beat you up, man. You know, who hit, hit me, nobody. That's just, you know, I was not sick. See? See, you got to say, you know, I wasn't sick. Somebody was there, nobody hit you. You were drunk. They have beat me. See, now he lying. And I felt it not. Now they whooped him. He said, that's a sad part. Like Brother Fred said, you forget what happened. Like the guy grabbed my neck. He forget. So he think they beat me up, but I didn't feel it. But he know, okay, because I was drunk, so they started hitting me. Dude, if, I don't care how drunk you are. If they put enough fist on you, it wakes you up. Now pain gets you up. He says, when shall I wait? I will seek it yet again. He said, I'm going for it again. I used to have relatives. I would hear them after they were drunk. You can hear them in the restaurant. They come out and go, man, I just I ain't going to do that no more. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, soon as Saturday come. I said, I say, hey, man, what's up? I say, uh, I thought you were going to do it no more. Man, mind your business. I'm like, okay. You the one saying I'm hollering the toilet. You the one hollering the restaurant. I don't do it no more. Sometimes they'd be hollering, Lord, help me. You know, and then lying, and Saturday come, he back again. Drinking even more. Even more. It's ridiculous. Because all them statements he man, like Brother Fritz said, he don't even remember he said, he don't even remember he cried to the Lord. 
You know, you tell him, yeah, man, because it was bad, but it's on Friday. Few, few boys call him, few girls call him. Well, you know what, he's back. That's the problem. And see, this is the problem, and they began to hold the drinking establishments accountable now. Mm -hmm. Because they're saying, you know when a person drunk. You listening to a man for no, I know, and he can hardly say it, you know. And so now they have to take the keys. They have to, you know, they're not forcefully hurt them in a nice way. Or they can call the police right there to take the keys, you know. And they call them a cab or Uber, Lyft, whatever. And they get them on and say, okay, your vehicle going to be right here. Put the keys in their hand when they go. I remember a guy asked me one night. He was talking pretty good. He even remembered we went to the same high school together, but he didn't remember me, but he mentioned it. He said, man, that's amazing, small world. So he got out and he said, hey, man, take me back to the truck. I said, I can't do this, sir. I said, I said I'll be the end of my career. I said, I can't do that. I said, the dude told me to take you home, and you home. Mm -hmm. So he said, I understand. He said, take it easy, man. I drove out. He started walking behind my car. He's going to walk to go get his truck. He's going to walk all the way back. It wasn't that far, but they knew he couldn't drive. After, after that point, he on his own, man. God have my pray for him. I was like, man, I have to go to work. I have to go to work. I can't babysit no grown man, you know. You know, got you home, go in the house and go to bed. You know, they're probably going to steal your vehicle, you know. It's a nice neighborhood, too. So it is what it is. So why are you saying it? Because he doesn't understand, you know. He's talking about me. You remember high school? That's great. But... Once again, Brother Fritz, that's something. All you need is one transmitter to be disconnected. Mm. And you look to the left and the right and you thought you saw it. But you can hardly drive when you're sober and woke. And you pull out and you didn't see that car that was on the side of the other car going so fast he connects with you. Mm. You get the ticket because you pull it out in front of him. No matter he was going 80. Nobody going to remember my foul. They know there's something going bang, bang, bang. All they know is I saw the guy run the stop sign. He pulled right in front of him. But you can't do that. Now, somebody gauges the other guy's speed, they might be a winner for you. But if he says going fast on the law, you're going to say, how fast was he going, sir? And then you're going to get cheese up on the stand. You're going to drop it. You're going to stop. Nobody gauging that. So you got that. And then you might get that guy killed. He could end up shooting through the windshield like a rocket. And I'm just telling you, you have to understand. So you can't do it. And no one wants to hear how sad. Look, dead bodies don't come back to life because you cry a river of tears. You could get a billion dollars on the family's hand and say, they, well, the children will know what to count. It's still, they would tell you, we'd rather be working the worst job on earth and have our daddy alive than to be quoting Shakespeare, you know, our daddy should be able to hear us quoting Shakespeare. He's dead because you got him killed. People don't care about it. Now, they're going to get the money because it'll help with life, but there's nobody, nobody ever say, well, it's a good thing daddy died because we got the money. You know, that's ridiculous. Nobody wants their parents' life or their kids' life cut short for money. It's ridiculous. That's their devious, evil person. So we have to stop and understand, y'all, that God is with us and these things, these things are taught. We'll have more information on this to share. But we're dealing with how once you're no longer sober mentally, remember, you're using your brain to fight the devil unless you have brain damage. See, now remember, if it's brain damage, that means Satan can't even do nothing because it's damaged. He has to have a part of your brain functioning where he can get your motor skill, get you to shoot the middle finger up, punch somebody in the face. He, he, he has no joy in dealing with that because once he comes in that inner you and it's brain damage, don't you know God got you covered? He's not going to get in there and make you curse out God because you got brain. That's ridiculous, brother. It's the idea is that when you got drunk, that's what the Lord is saying. Don't be deceived. See, now you let him in. See, he can't come in there. He can't come in there like that. They'll tell you, what about the person that has mental issues? Well, the Lord knows what he's going to do in his heart. You still have a heart, the inner man. But when you're drunken, the inner man now becomes drunk. That's what we want to talk to you about. The inner man is drunk. Henceforth, Lot sleeps. Not with an animal. It didn't say a lot was so drunk he slept with a dog. He knew it was a girl. He knew it was two women. He knew that. One each day. He, he didn't sleep with a dude. A woman. Now I'm not saying that can't happen to you. 
But we do know this is what happened a lot. So we have to understand that. Hold on. Poor Noah, bless his heart. If Noah hadn't have got drunk, there's no way his boys and just broke into the door would have seen him like that. Now, we're not saying that they should be excused, the boy that saw him. But what if, what if he was sober? What if he was sober? So remember, I remember Henry mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. You got to watch what you do when you're drunk because you may cause someone else to sin against you. So that's a lesson learned. So God bless you. If you're not a member of the church, recognize you can be saved right now. There's a little V-shaped object to the right of the title. Brother Frizz has painstakingly put phone numbers in there for you to call. If you're listening to this message, no matter where you're at, call anyone of those numbers, any of those congregations, and they will guide you to someone to baptize. You just need to know your location and know how much information you know, and they may ask you some things too, and you can be saved. You first have to accept Jesus, Son of God. He died, was buried the third day, rose again, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He himself said in Mark 16, 16, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. So Peter, having been taught by Christ himself, understands when they ask in Acts 2, 37, Men and brethren, what shall we do? He responds, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. He tells you what it's for. And he tells you, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And then he explains why it's designed that way. For the promise is unto you. What is the promise? The Holy Spirit. The promise of my Father, he said. And unto your children, to all that are far off, even as men as the Lord our God shall call. So that's still today. See, if you alter that message like T.D. Jakes and Joel Osteen and Hilliard and other teachers, you alter the blessing. So you get zero. You get zero. And so he is clear. And with many other words that he's testifying and encouraging him, saying, save yourselves from this unto all, which is a perverted generation. Just like the drunkard. This generation, this age is drunk on sin without touching any liquor or, or, or drugs. And then they're glad to see his word baptized today. About 3,000 souls that same day were saved. So why does the Holy Ghost give us the exact amount? He says about 3,000. Because it's not necessary. Isn't that amazing? It says about 3,000. You know, some people will look at a word like that and try to judge God. Accuracy on that. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Because there wasn't something the Holy Ghost needed him to know. He didn't need to have the exact amount. See, those are things that challenge our belief that God chooses to share what information he wants with us. And we have to understand it. The secret thing belongs to the Lord. I know the Holy Ghost knows exactly how many got baptized. He doesn't share it. There it is. So if we believe and understand that, we see that he says they continue some of the apostle doctrine, the breaking of bread and prayers, and the fellowship to walk in the light as Christ is in the light. And so, and the Lord adds to the church daily, such should be saved. Acts 2 and 47. So if you believe that, the eunuch, he sees the water after being taught very well. You know the power, you can, brethren, I want to encourage you, you can always use the Ethiopian eunuch for your benefit. Always you can use it. Here's the reason why. Because Philip uses a text that has none of the key words he needs to prove salvation and the church. That's not a word in there. He has to explain who the prophet talking about. It doesn't mention cross, water, church, congregation. So this is the New Testament. So when you teach from the Old Testament, you have to remember, you're not going to find those words in the Old Testament. No, you're not. You're going to have to use them in the New. Don't get bent out of shape and discouraged when someone says it doesn't say that in the Old Testament. So what were the Bereans looking at? As they're searching the Old Testament, Paul is tying in the new with this. Now this means that. And the one prophet raised up, this is Jesus. If you are of the truth, you'll go, yeah. If not, you'll go, we don't say that here. Okay, that's fine. You'll just be one of many that are down here. You have to have confidence in the New Testament. It's the only thing that can explain what the old is. The old is a shadow. 
Paul is a shadow. You've got, you've got to have confidence in the New Testament. They're going to deny because it doesn't say in the Old Testament. You're right. It doesn't. And it's never going to say it because the new connects to the old. And it makes the message now make sense. And it has continuity from Genesis all the way to the last book, Revelation. So if you believe that, the eunuch sees water, Philip explains them clearly. If you believe it all your heart, you may. That's not, that's not in Isaiah 53. He says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That's not in Isaiah 53. He doesn't talk about believing anything in Isaiah 53. So, he stops charity, baptizing, all types of joy commence, and then Paul explains why it's so unusually technical. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body with a Jew and Gentile bond of free and have all been made to drink into one spirit. If you believe that, Peter says the same. 1 Peter 3, 21, the life figure, well, so even baptisms also now save us. I love the way the Lord has helped us. We don't have to worry about the thief on the cross. Now saves us. That's, 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 that's why that's there. That's one of the reasons we can use it. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. We know it's not the water, but the answer of a good conscience. That's your soul answering, inquiring, and reaching to God's call to you. Answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Why is that outside the room? See, it's saying that is getting his authority and power from what Christ did. It's emulating Christ, and he's actually doing it to you spiritually. Who has gone in heaven, tells his authority. At the right hand of God, angel, Lord, and power being made subject to him. You know, those two verses in that text, Peter is like, that's how you know the Holy Ghost is with him. He is doing a master's job at teaching you out your mind if you think you can be saved without baptism. It's nailed to the cross. If we believe that Jesus himself said, Behold, the devil shall cast some of you in the privilege, Revelation 2.10. You have tribulation 10 days to be faithful to death. This is the important, brother. Faith. And you know what's far about faithfulness? We can't talk about it enough because it's hoping for something you can't see yet, but somebody's guaranteed it's going to be there. So your confidence is in the one that guaranteed it. Not the teacher, but Christ, the Father, the Holy Spirit. If you find yourself not believing in something, it's time to hit your face on the floor and ask, God, help me. I'm losing it because there's no hope for you from that day forward. Because if the guarantor, Christ, the Father, and the Holy Spirit cannot get your confidence, you're gone. It's a matter of days before you become toast, crash and burn. It's over. Because you don't believe the one who said. That's why the Bible says he's faithful that promise. Man, God don't promise nothing he can't do. That's why he told David, I could have never gave you a ride hit time life. I'm, you know, that's the way. And he didn't apologize for it. He said, I could have gave you anything, but I could have never done that one. And that's why I said, I'm not going to forgive you. You're going to suffer. I'm going to let you live and forgive, but I'm going to punish you. And sometimes we get ourselves in stuff. That's why you got to watch drinking. Drugs. Because when you do stuff, it's some stuff the Lord will tell you. Now I'm not gonna I'm gonna forgive you, I'm not gonna put you in hell, but man, I gotta whoop you for years behind this. What you did, I'm gonna whoop you. That might mean jail forever. That might mean family don't want to touch you no more forever. You don't know what it's gonna mean. Don't do it. Let us learn from the David. Learn from the Moses and the mistakes they made. Let us learn. God bless you. If you're ready to be baptized, stay standing and we sit down. If you need prayer, though, come down together. We stand and sing heaven's invitation. And tenderly, Jesus is calling. Thank you, my God. Calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching. Watching for you and for me. Come home.